Hi, and welcome. This is Cousin Russ. Uh, my continuing um, work with my heritage, the website, I uploaded a GEDCOM file from Family Tree Maker 2014 to uh, my heritage and I got an email back that said I had a match and uh, from their smart match and the smart match was for Hannah Worthington what I did is I copied the link from the my heritage website and pasted it into the address bar where I could see the profile from my heritage and the item that is her obituary, which is right here. I want to get that information from um, my heritage into Family Tree Maker. Now, I just hovered over that icon and uh, the, of the image, and I turned on what is called the web clipper. And when I cover over the item, I can. Um, highlight the date and then I can enter that date into the facts. Now that date that I selected was her death date. Now I know that it's not complete but I have t told Family Tree Maker to insert that fact and it'll come in down here and I'm going to edit that date because it's not complete and I know that when I looked at it it was uh, 10 23 1968 and that's all I'm sorry 10 23 it was her birth date 18 I gotta cancel this I'm gonna cancel that I, I knew what I was doing, but so that was her birth date. And if I look over here on the left hand side, that's what I have in my tree. And uh, what I have in my tree is where she was born, but I didn't see that on the article yet. But I'm going to edit that to 10. 23 1881 and I'm going to save that and right now I've already done the address and death date I want to get rid of that one because that's not accurate and it's reminded me <clears throat> so what I want to do is merge what is here the night I just did a couple of facts and I would spend more time uh, and I'll show you how I can handle that but I wanted to get this merge done so I'm going to do a merge and it's going to ask me bring up the screen it's going to ask me to if I really want to merge the information that's coming from my heritage into family tree maker and this is a normal merge screen and the name is correct so it's going to do discard the fact that it's the same name but it's going to keep the source and that's what I really want the birth date is what's in my file and I'm going to make it an alternate fact I may be able to fix that later on but I don't know yet but so this this is the complete death birth date and this just has the date now I'm going to add as an alternate date this address uh, that's the address that was in the, that obituary. So I'm going to take everything that's here. I'm going to keep this as preferred because that's the information I had from another source. I'm going to discard the duplicate name because it's exactly the same. This birth date is different than this in that it has the location over here. This one does not. And this is another address that I have for her. I'm going to click Next and it's going to ask me for this is it's going to give me a summary of what I am merging response time that you're experiencing that you're seeing here is because of the fact that I've got this hangout going and it 
takes computer resources. So this is the information that's going to be merged, and there is the citation that is coming from coming into Family Tree Maker, and I will fix that later as part of my normal cleanup process, which is what I've shown before. I'm going to click on Merge now. So now what's happening is Family Tree Maker is taking a data that's over here and it's going to add it over here to my person. I can close that. So now the data that was from my heritage is now in Family Tree Maker. And if I go back to Hannah and we click on People and I will see some new information. There's that address. And I don't know where that is yet, uh, but uh, that's the address that came in. And I'm going to mark that private because I want my address is private. Now, what I want to do here down at the bottom, now I have the resource, uh, I'm sorry, the research log open, which is what I normally do. And I'm going to start a bullet point. I'm going to put in today's date, 04. 30, I learned how to type, 14, um, this is from the Colorado Springs Springs Gazette Telegraph. And it's dated um, 10, 11, 1963 obituary. So that's telling me what I found, that I found it here. And I have some other notes that I haven't taken care of yet. But that's what I'm going to deal with, is that I'm going to deal with this obituary. Now. I have the obituary uh, online, and this is at um, my heritage. This is what was on the screen, and you'll see the newspaper down below. Now, I can't see that very well, so I'm going to go over to another tab where I have that obituary, and I'm going to scroll down to where that obituary is. And there it is, right here. That is the obituary. Now, I can't do much with that from here. So what I did was to open up Notepad. And I can transcribe. I can read here and type it into here. So what I did, I transcribed this newspaper. And I typed it into Notepad, and it's got word wrap on because I wanted to be able to see it. But I want to, I want to unword wrap that, and I want to get down here, and I'm going to highlight. I'm going to copy that obituary that I typed into Notepad, and you don't want to see me type. So, and I hit Control Control C. I'm going to close this window down. And then I'm going to come into the person notes, and I'm going to paste it. So I pasted that notepad entry into the notes screen for that person. So this is the this is the obituary that came from that that came from that newspaper. And I did a citation because that's what I want to do. And I created a newspaper citation for that newspaper, which is the Colorado Springs Gazette Telegraph. And it's a, it is a template. And just to show you what the template look, looks like, it's a the newspaper article printed version by newspaper name, because that's how I have chosen to do these things. There's the newspaper title, the state, the city. Where I got it from, I got it from my heritage. And I made a note that if I look at evidence explained, uh, the quick model on page 7, 
85, I know what I need to pick up. I got the article. I need to pick up the article name, the newspaper, which I have up here, the issue date, page, and number. So that's a reminder for me of what I need to have in the source detail, which is right here. I just copied this down here, so this is a reminder. I'm not going to display that in my uh, my reference note. There's I copied the link from the website and pasted it in here. And there is my citation. I also did a screen capture of that column that was in the newspaper, and I saved it as a, a JPEG file. So it's an image. So the image is right here. And um, so I have my citation all filled out, and I then read that article, which is down here. And as I read, as I read through the various details, I made them into facts. So I transcribed the, I picked up the date. So here's that birth. She was born in Arian. Adrian, Michigan, on the first uh, or October twenty third, eighteen eighty one, which is what I had done here. And when I did the merge for demonstration purposes, I made a duplicate. But I'm going to I can get rid of that because I had actually um, done the the rather than take the time here to show you how I did that. There is that citation that gave her birth date and location, which is right here, and there's the fact. Now, a quick way to copy a citation that's already there that you want to link to other facts, you click on the second icon which says Copy Source Citation. I clicked on that. It's now on my clipboard. Now I can come up here, and I've already done it, but I'm going to show you what I did. I, I picked up in the article that everybody called her Aunt Hannah, and Hannah is my grandfather's sister. And uh, I wanted to cite the fact that her name was Aunt Hannah, and it's an AKA, also known as, which everybody knew about Aunt Hannah. And I clicked on paste link source citation. So I copied that citation from this fact by this icon and I pasted it to this fact. So it saves me a lot of time and typing errors. When I started this merge, before I transcribed the um, obituary, I only had a couple pieces of information. Uh, basically, I, I knew where she was born, and that's all I basically knew about her. I guess I had a couple. There's a, a census record that I had on her. Uh, there's another census record. Uh, so I had this from a, was from a family group sheet, but the newspaper article, so I have conflicting information. Uh, there's a, from the same source, I have conflicting information. But I know when she died, because the newspaper article told me, and where she's buried, and where she was educated, where she worked, that she was single in the 1885 census. She was the founder of the William Penn Indian Center. Uh, she was a registered nurse. She was a Quaker. So all of this information is what I picked up over time on her. So basically, uh, I took the data that was from that obituary on myheritage.com, and I merged it. I looked at it to make sure it was my person, and you'll see the profile from her that's in my heritage from me. In other words, I uploaded that JEDCOM. The smart match found her obituary for me, and I merged it into Family Tree Maker. And I have research notes that tells me that I that I found it when I found it. And I come over here to the person notes, 
and I, I transcribed that image of the obituary and I typed it in notepad because I put the two screens next to one another. I then copied it by unword wrapping in notepad um, and pasted that unword wrapped text into the, the note section for this person. There's the citation and if I ever need the um, look at that image, I can uh, that's not the right image that I want. Let me. There is that image. Now, I'm not done with that image, and I'm going to take care of it right now. I want that citation on that image. So there is the citation for that fact where that that's attached to that image. I'm going to right click select all well I thought so I'm going to highlight it and hit control C and hit cancel and then I'm going to go to the media file media workspace and I'm going to find that obituary that I just brought in and I'm going to do that by going down to categories because I have categorized my um, images and I'm going to click on obituary and there is that obituary. And what I'm going to do over here is going to right click and paste. So now that citation for the newspaper article is now sitting in the description for that image. So I can look at this image and know exactly where I get, gave it from, got it from. So, and I'm also going to change the caption. There's the file name that that I when I did the screen capture I called it by my normal file name convention and then I'm going to um, rename uh, retype the uh, caption for it and I'm going to call it Hannah Worthington and I'm going to um, change the format of the date. I'm going to put uh, 11 October 1963 and then I'm going to, this is my normal convention for um, how I put captions and I'm going to put obituary and I'm going to put a dash in there So the this image that was that newspaper article has the caption, there's the file name, and there is the citation. So that is basically what I have done uh, to capture the information that came in from uh, my heritage, and it's now into Family Tree Maker. And I did it all from within Family Tree Maker, so I don't have to bounce around between various screens. Uh, and I did show you where it was on my heritage. And what I will do when, uh, oh, by the way, here's a picture of her. I'm going to click down here. And there is Hannah. Um, and she was a registered nurse, and you can tell that. So there's some information that uh, is helpful that so there's the fact that she was a registered nurse and she in fact was so um, that is uh, my grandfather's sister my great aunt and uh, that's how I captured the information from my heritage and it is now in family tree maker hope that helps bye bye